Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. I'm Jacob Letman. Before we get going with today's sweet video, if you accidentally forgot to use a referral code to start driving for Uber, it's okay. I'm gonna show you how to use a retroactive sign-up code so you can get your guarantee of up to $1,000. All right, all you gotta do is open the Uber Driver app. At the top of the screen, you're gonna see either your picture or three lines. Click there. Then you're gonna click Earnings. Next, click help or the question mark, depending on what you see. Click account and payment, then click referrals. Click invited driver, report my missing or incorrect driver referral. Click send a message. The invite code that you're gonna use is JACOBL17756UI. Friend's name is Jacob Letman. Phone number is going to be 307-349-7713. And the email address is goodvibetribe222 at gmail.com. Finally, under details, you're just going to put, my friend Jacob referred me to drive for Uber. That's it. Send it in and get your guarantee of up to $1,000 to start driving with Uber. Jacob Blitman was a driver. Bow out. He was a cool dude for sure. Bow out. He had a lot of great info on the rideshare hub, so please don't go. That might be my best song to date. Might not be, but hey, Jacob Blitman here. The Ride Sh Share Hub, the Ride Share Hub, the Ride Share Hub is here. And you're on it with me. And we got a video coming at you. And it's a good one because I want you to make more tip money. All right. So, hey, you haven't started driving yet for Lyft or Uber. What? Get to it. Get down into the video description below. Click the links. Fill them out. Sign up get sign on bonuses that's how that works subscribe to our channel get all our cool videos get alerts about them watch them make more money be more informed all right if you do like this video give it a big thumbs up please appreciate it much appreciated today what i'm talking about directly impacts tips i 100 guarantee it 100 guarantee no money back though uh, today, we're talking about five ways to read your passengers better. So I'm talking about getting inside their minds. What are they thinking? How are they feeling? And why am I, why Jacob Letman should I listen to you about this? Well, actually, I have a degree in communications and I am very, uh, very well educated on this topic. And I've put what, uh, my knowledge into practice and it has paid off very well. So, again, yeah, we're talking about five ways to better read your passengers. We're talking about communication, and here's a fun fact. You might not know this. This is true, this is accurate. 70% uh, of communication is not spoken words. <sighs> Did that just blow your mind? It blew my mind when I first found that out. What? So only 30% of communication comes from spoken words. That is crazy. So where does the other communication come from? Well, let me tell you. So number one, this is a big chunk of communication, and that is body language. So let's, uh, let's make this applicable to driving, right? You stop, you pull up, you see your passenger, you verify that it is your passenger, right? Uh, they get in and you say, hey, how are you doing? So first thing we're talking about, right, body language. So what I'm looking for are, are they smiling? Are they frowning? Are they laughing? Are they crying? Are they looking at their phone? Are they looking out the window? Are they looking down? Are their eyes closed? Are they sleeping? So all of those things constitute body language, and that is a huge portion of understanding where your passenger is at. And um, how I'm gonna make this applicable to driving is on whether or not to talk to them, or how much to communicate with them. Do you wanna talk to them a lot or let them be? Because we found that a lot of drivers over talk to their passengers and the passengers just want to chill in the back and relax. And so that's why this is important because if you give them a great experience and they're 
relaxed or engaged in a good conversation with you, the odds are you're gonna get a better tip. Not always, this isn't, it doesn't work like that, but it is a big part of it. So, reading that body language, okay? That's number one. Number two, tonality of how your passengers are saying things. Give me an example, Jacob. Get on it. Okay, so if I say, hey, how's your day going today? It's fine. Or if I say, hey, how's your day going today? It's fine. That's tonality, right? So you can tell a lot by the way someone says something. Um, where are you headed? I'm headed to see my girlfriend. Hey, where are you headed today? Oh yeah, I'm headed to see my girlfriend today. So tonality is a big part of it. You, you know, you can tell a lot just from that. Number three, um, when you ask a question to your passengers, how short or long is their response? I can tell a lot about uh, whether or not a passenger is interested in having a conversation on if they give me a short or long answer. And these are go-to questions that I ask. I'll be like, hey, um, how's the AC back there? How's the temperature back there? Yeah, it's good. Okay, well, that's probably an indication they're not interested in striking up a conversation. Hey, how's the temperature back there? Oh yeah, no, it's really good. Uh, thanks for asking. And then I'll follow it up with, just let me know if you need it adjusted, all right. Okay, yeah, thanks, I appreciate that. Oh, uh, and other things I ask is what kind of music, this is better because this is more open-ended. What kind of music are you into? Oh, I'm good with whatever. Oh yeah, you know, I like, uh, I like country, but I'm not really a big fan of heavy rock or, I swear to God, I asked an old lady one time her favorite genre of music and I'm thinking like, I don't know, Celine Dion maybe or something for Sonny and Cher. She hits me with Tupac. I was like, that's awesome, props. That was cool. Okay, so yeah, the length of the answer can help determine on whether or not your passenger wants to have a conversation with you. Uh, number four, here's a good one. If your passenger asks you questions, then the odds are they probably want to have a conversation with you. Um, how do you like driving? Yeah, I like it, it's been great, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, do you do this full-time or part-time? Uh, is it lucrative? So if your passengers are asking you questions, odds are they're looking to engage in a conversation. Um, number five, this is a basic one, but such a big indicator. Where your passenger sits in your vehicle, right? If your passenger sits in the back seat, um, it doesn't necessarily mean they don't wanna have a conversation, but if they sit in the front seat, odds are they're looking to have a conversation. Only one time of all the rides I've ever given, which is just under 2,000 now, um, only one ride, and this was crazy. I gave a ride to this dude. We were going the wrong way with traffic, morning ride, and uh, we're in the carpool lane and still going nowhere. It took us an hour, over an hour and a half to, to get to where he was going. He sat in the front seat, so I'm at, you know, automatically I'm thinking, all right, this guy wants to have a conversation. I tried to strike up conversation at least a dozen times. I'm very, very conversationalist. I will, you know, try and talk about little things to get someone to open up and feel comfortable. The guy was not having it. He was just awkwardly sitting right next to me, staring straight ahead an hour and a half. He was giving me the short answers with the, yeah, fine, low tonality, and body language was looking straight ahead. And I was like, okay, this is really awkward. It was so awkward just driving like in silence. I'm like, is this guy gonna kill me when I look to the side to check my mirrors? He didn't, I'm still here. Anyway, there you go, guys. There are five ways uh, to better read your passengers to see if they're interested in having a conversation or not. If you can gauge that well and either engage in a conversation with your passengers or let them be and do their thing and just hang out, It'll help with tips, I promise. All right, again, you guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, really appreciate that. I am Jacob Letman. follow me on Instagram at jacob.letman. Follow Rideshare Hub on Instagram at Rideshare Hub. 
And uh, drop down in the comment section below and let us know your thoughts, feedback, and feelings on how to know whether or not to have conversations with your passengers. All right, take care, everyone. We'll see you next time.